Good morning, bon dia, buenos dias, buongiorno. Welcome to Vertical Blue 2021 Day 2. I'm Francesca Coe, your Chief Media Officer, and wow, what a day we had yesterday. We apologize for the technical difficulties. We know you want to see all of the dives, but suffice it to say, four new absolute world records on the very first day was incredible. Congratulations to Alexei Molchanov of Russia, to Alessia Zacchini of Italy, to Alenka Artnik of Slovenia, and to Arnaud Gerald of France, all with super clean, amazing performances. Today, we have eight national records on tap, and our host, William Trubridge, will be making his first competition attempt dive, uh, the first of the second session with a free immersion attempt. And it's been a real challenge coming back from COVID and the pandemic and trying to get organized for Vertical Blue. And he's done a fantastic job, as well as the safety team and the medics. It's just been a real collaborative effort and we're so glad we're able to bring this to you from Dean's Blue Hole in the Bahamas. We're on Long Island. It's one of the family islands. It's a beautiful place to come and free dive. It's a beautiful place to come and just hang out on the gorgeous beaches. We also want to thank all of the locals who make us feel so welcome, feel so at home. This is the actual 12th incarnation of Vertical Blue and we're glad to be back after our three-year hiatus. It will be interesting to see what happens over these next days of competition between the men fighting for new world records in constant weight bifins and free immersion and especially for the ladies in constant weight. The competition has never been higher, the performances have never been stronger and I want to underscore something that I really love about seeing these fantastic female athletes. They are all cheering and rooting each other on. They're all pushing their own limits and they want the best for each other. It's a little more rivalry with the men, so that keeps it interesting. Would definitely like you guys to stay tuned to all of the action. So make sure you're subscribed here, VB Freediving on YouTube. Make sure you follow all your favorite athletes on Instagram. Everybody's using the hashtag V like vertical, B like blue, 2021. And share with us your thoughts in the comments. Tweet us, put your notes on Facebook. Whatever the platform is, you can find us, vertical blue, vertical underscore blue, or VB freediving. And again, I am so excited to see what will unfold in the coming days. Uh, you never know what's going to happen with freediving. We have some strong contenders coming from around the world. We have 42 different athletes from a range of countries, 20 different countries. And, you know, Vertical Blue is absolutely the pinnacle of freediving, but it's also a place where new faces come in. Yesterday, we saw for the first time, Belle Winner from the Bahamas set a new national record for women for the Bahamas, and that was very exciting. So it's great to see representation from all ages and all levels. It's great to see people who are specialists in particular disciplines, and it's great to see the people who are doing as much as they can across all of the disciplines. And we especially want to thank all of our sponsors. We want to thank Orca. We want to thank Sunto. We want to thank Double K, who came in at the last minute, and we are really grateful. And a lot of the freedivers here are wearing uh, Double K wetsuits. So again, thank you to everyone who supports us and to all the folks who are wondering about, well, you know, what do the free divers eat? How do they train? What do they do? Don't forget to send us your questions on Facebook and or on Twitter. And the Facebook page is Vertical Blue and the Twitter handle is Vertical underscore Blue because we like to give you as much behind the scenes information as we can and we want you to feel like you're right here in all the action. 
Again, if for some reason the stream goes out, it's not that folks aren't trying, everybody's trying their hardest. And I think we've got some of those kinks worked out. So thank you for your patience and keep us apprised of who you're rooting for uh, as we all root together for all of these athletes who are doing everything they can to push the limits of the sport and to unify all of the ways that we bring this together because you know this is an olympic year and someday we would like to see free diving in the olympics i also want to reintroduce you to our commentators for this event we have two new faces we've got rachel and sean and they are going to be walking through with the athletes their dives what happened different things so please make them feel welcome um, and also encourage them and follow them on Instagram as well. We're going to be seeing some folks do more national records, like Alex Davis of Barbados set a new national record yesterday, and he's going to be diving some more. So just stay tuned. The excitement is continuing, and we're going to head back over to the platform. Thanks for watching. Ciao. All right, so Sheena McNally has just announced a free immersion dive time of 83 meters, and she is on her way down looking pretty strong. 20 meters. So Sean, what did you think of yesterday's competitions and dives? It was incredible. I've learned, learned a lot so far, learned about all the different disciplines, and it's been really awesome meeting all the athletes. And so, just to be clear, you have no formal freediving experience, is that correct? I have absolutely no freediving experience. 45 seconds. So they have brought you on just to help make our viewers who might not know a little bit about freediving or might be interested in getting into freediving, um, give you the opportunity to learn with some of our viewers. Exactly. And so yesterday you learned about free fall or the sink phase, which is what Sheena has just dropped into right now. She is no longer moving and she is just relaxing and pursuing the depths. 60 meters. 150. 70 meters. 130. And she has now hit the candy cane. Touchdown. Turn. And grabbed a tag and she's right. on her way up. Coming back up. 70 meters. 145. So for those who don't know about free diving, Sean, what did you learn about what is called a candy cane? The candy cane is the end of the, the line. The line. And that's where the tag is placed at the bottom. Yep. And that candy cane is three meters three long. Meters. And so that is a point where the diver can do whatever they need to grab that tag. We have three safeties in the water at all times, and our first safety has just gone down to meet Sheena. 50 meters. 250. 40 meters. 
30. 30 meters for safety. And this Sheena, Sheena has just been met by the first safety. She is still looking strong. And now the second safety is within frame. Sheena is doing her recovery breaths. Okay. Oh. Flash the OK sign. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> and now we are waiting for the judge's response. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Yes. 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 So for those who might not know about free diving, a white card means that the diver has performed a perfectly clean dive to the depth that they have announced. And there's three different cards, correct? Yes. White, so yellow, and red? That's correct. So a white card means that the diver did it perfectly. A yellow card means that they did the dive, but they may have not gone to the depth that they announced, or it wasn't a perfectly clean dive. And then a red card means that they are penalized and not able to count any points so they get zero points for that dive. Okay. So what did you learn about the different disciplines yesterday? So you have bifins, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. um, what does CWT stand for again? That is constant weight. Constant weight uh -huh. and then monofin. Um, yep, so those are both under the constant weight discipline for this particular competition. So Vertical Blue recognizes either a monofin or bifin under the constant weight discipline. We also have free immersion, and then we also have constant weight with no fins, where the diver is diving with no fins whatsoever. All right, so our next diver is Junga Kim from Korea. And she is going to be announcing a constant weight bifins dive of 81 meters with a dive time of three minutes and 10 seconds. So right now our safeties are pulling up the line and getting that dive set and we are good to go. So they change the depth between each. Yes, so we start with the swim. deepest dives of each session and it is easier for the safeties to pull the line up rather than to drop it down every single time. So we'll start with the deepest dives first and then work our way from there. <laughs> so for Vertical Blue, we have 42 athletes from 21 countries. That's consisting of 18 women and 24 men. Yeah, so we have quite a diverse mix of divers here from all over the world. It's fantastic to see everybody come together. And it's actually been very interesting to see some divers that I've met in different parts of the world here in the Bahamas. So Junga is going to be doing a national record attempt so she's going to be getting ready and we are going to cheer her on. This is her second dive of the competition. Yesterday she did a free immersion dive to 77 meters and got a white card. It's interesting seeing how each diver prepares differently. Oh yeah, what have you noticed so far? Well, some people sit upright, some people lay back. There was one diver yesterday, he had his face down in the water before. 
yet and it's interesting to see especially since this, this is my first depth competition that I've been able to watch or get to witness and it's interesting seeing also from my perspective how each diver either uses pool noodles mm -hmm. they have their face submerged in the water or some people actually use those airline pillows two minutes so we are two minutes from official top. So for those who don't know a little bit about Junga, she's from Korea. She's been free diving for seven years, five of which are have been in Panglao in the Philippines, which is an amazing free diving destination and an amazing place for competitors to train. Uh, she has a free diving company called Sunsu Free Diving, or Pure, and that's on Jeju Isle. She has seven Korean national world rec or national records and she is going for another national record today. Okay, and the dive eye is following Junga down into the depths. She has just hit 20 meters. Junga has just hit 40 meters and is looking nice and relaxed. in a nice free fall. It's amazing to see how dark it gets down there. The blue hole is 202 meters deep. That is over 600 feet for anyone who uses the Imperial system. And it can get quite dark fairly quickly, even with amazing visibility. She has now hit the candy cane and is going for that tag. There she goes. Now at 70 meters and working her way up. 45. Our first safety is going down to meet her. She is now at the 50 meter mark. And our second safety has just gone down.
She is now at the 30 meter mark. And our first deep safety is accompanying her to the surface. She is about to surface. looked like a clean okay and now we are awaiting the responses of the judges look at that happy face she has the tag with her and is showing the judges white card, white card! and that is a new national record for korea congratulations <laughs> So not only was that a new national record for Korea, that was also a continental record for CMAS Asia. All right, so that was a fantastic dive. What did you think of that? It was amazing. It was, she had a, it was interesting. Yesterday I saw the difference of people who dive down faster and then a little bit slower on the way up and vice versa. Mm -hmm. That seemed she was constant speed down, constant speed up. Mm -hmm. And for any diver who is starting to learn a little bit more about free diving, the goal is to be at about an average of one meter per second. Some divers are obviously diving faster than that and some are diving slower, depending on what discipline they use. All right, so our safety team is going to be pulling up the line and getting it set for the second or the third dive of this session. Uh, for those who did not get to join us yesterday, there are three sessions. We have the very deepest sessions in the very middle, and that allows our safety team to get set up and make sure that everything goes nice and smooth. And then there are dives on either side that allow, which are all very, very deep as well, compared to what any of us are able to dive. Yeah. A lot of the dives in the first and third sessions were 70, 80 plus meters. I did three meters yesterday. You did? Okay, so we're yeah. working up. So our next diver is Enchante Gallardo from the USA. She is a freediving instructor and she actually got to do a dive yesterday. She did a constant weight by fins dive to 80 meters. She did have an early turn, but we are looking forward to seeing what she has today. Today she has announced a constant weight five fins dive of 80 meters with a dive time of 3.02. Now, do divers usually dive in the same discipline or do they mix it up throughout the competition? Well, that really depends on the strengths of that particular free diver, what records they're going for, and what areas that they like to compete in. So one diver, if they're going for a national record or a world record, may do all of that particular discipline, or they may try and work all around and do all different disciplines and see as try and go as deep as they can in every discipline. So as far as this competition, they are going to be adding the scores from the three different disciplines. So if a competitor is looking to win this competition, they will be diving in all three disciplines.
Can you explain again what packing means? So packing is when a free diver has inhaled as much as they possibly can by just taking as deep of a breath as possible. But then what they do to increase the amount of air in their lungs is they sip some air and they push it down into their lungs. This is an advanced free diving technique that we don't want beginner free divers doing. A lot of the divers who do pack have been training free diving for years and have built up the lung flexibility and the strength to do this safely. So we are about 1.30 from official top and Enchante or Chante is getting ready for her dive. She looked super strong yesterday and we're looking forward to another strong dive today. very supportive. We have a lot of free divers around the competition area just cheering on their friends and fellow competitors. So Shante has begun her dive, and yesterday she did do attempt the same dive. She had an announced dive of 80 meters of constant weight by fins yesterday, but did have an early turn. We are hoping that she will have a perfectly clean dive today, and we are looking forward to being able to talk to her about her dives later after her dive today. She is now at 50 meters. She was going a little bit off course, but has now realized that she got close to the, she got away from the dive line. She has returned back to the dive line and has hit an early turn. She's coming back up again, but still looks strong. She's at the 60 meter mark. now at the 30 meter mark and our first safety has come to meet her. Our second safety is now within frame. She's still looking nice and relaxed. She's doing her recovery breaths and has flashed the OK sign to the judges.
yellow card. So Shantae has just received a yellow card, but just for the divers who are joining us, a free diver has six dives during this competition. So if she wants to, she can attempt this and have a clean dive and get scored for that. It's great to see all the support from everyone out here. So what you're seeing right now is the competition area. We have a floating area where the diver has the line set, and then we also have a PVC square around that denotes the competition area. Our judges and our safeties are in the water with the divers. Rachel, is there a limit for the amount of times a diver can try to hit a depth turning around? There's no limit. Uh, however, are you talking about in a particular dive? So if they... So if say they have six dives and the first two, they're unfortunately at the turnaround, are they allowed to do it a third and fourth? Oh yeah, absolutely. It, like I said, it depends on the strategy, strategy of each individual diver. Mm -hmm. If their goal is to aim for a national or world record, they can use all six dives to do that. Okay. So now we have Florian Burghardt from Switzerland. He is a four-time national record holder. And Alenka is in the competition area, giving him some positive feedback and encouragement. She's just left the competition area. For those who are learning about different freediving disciplines, this is the constant weight discipline, which as we mentioned before, we can do with bifins or a monofin. However, the monofin has usually set the deepest records because of the efficiency and the power and propulsion that you can get from that particular type of fin. Did you notice anything interesting about the dives with any of the monofins yesterday? They're faster. and all most of the, the deepest depths were with monofins. And it was also interesting to see, they are diving so fast that yeah. if you look at the angle of the dive eye, the dive eye moves quite quickly, but these divers are moving faster. The monofin definitely seemed to be faster. Two minutes. So again, can we talk about what is around his neck? Yeah. 
Uh, so I can't quite see here, but it looks like there might be a dive weight. And if it is not a dive weight, he also has, uh, it could be a computer. Mm -hmm. So when divers are doing these depths, it is sometimes nice to have an alarm set for you to let you know where you are in certain parts of the dive. And if you have it just around your wrist, you might not be able to hear it, especially when you are as relaxed as possible. So it's nice to just have it close to your ears or close to your body. So we are one minute from official top. It's interesting to note that we're getting a little bit of seaweed in there today, which happens to be a very amazing headdress for one of our divers. And it's kind of funny to note when I was uh, swimming out in the water, I don't know if you've noticed this, but that can seconds. cause a rash if you don't have a wetsuit. Ooh. Just a mild itch, it doesn't sting. I'll stay away from it. 20 seconds. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, top time. Plus 10. Lorian Bugard, Switzerland, constant weight, 80 meters, dive time is 2.25. That okay? So he has an announced dive time of 2.25 and he's going to 80 meters. And it's amazing to see as you go deeper into your dive, you become less and less buoyant. So these wetsuits are actually positively buoyant, which is why you might see some of the divers diving with weights. But as you become more and more negatively buoyant, you have to move less and less and you're able to conserve your oxygen. So Florian is now past the 50 meter mark and smoothly going down to 80 meters. Have an early turn. He had an early turn at roughly around 70 meters, but he's looking strong on his way up. So if you're looking closely at the video, we noticed that he was moving his mouth around. Did you happen to see that? Is that equalizing? That could be. And so for those who don't know about diving, you, if you've ever dived to the bottom of a pool, sometimes you might notice some ear pain. If you pinch and blow, that push equalizes the air on the inside of your eardrum versus the outside of your eardrum that is caused by the water pressure. And if a diver can't do that safely, they might have an early turn. So maybe we'll get the opportunity to talk to him and see if this was the reason why he had an early turn. But so far he's looking strong. The safety team is accompanying him up to the surface and he is almost at the top. He gives the okay.
received a yellow card. So this was his first dive of the competition, so he still has the opportunity five more dives during the entire competition if he would like to use them. Hello again, everyone. So for those of you who are just joining us, we are now in session one of day two of the Vertical Blue Freediving Competition. My name is Rachel Novak. I am a freediving instructor. My name is Sean Russell Herman, and I'm a comedian. He noticed nothing about freediving, and he is learning about freediving during this competition. So for those who are also learning about this competition, you do have the opportunity to view this live on YouTube at V as in Victor, B as in Boy, or Vertical Blue Freediving at YouTube. And you can actually write in, and we are looking at the comments, so if you have any questions for the athletes or any questions for anybody how this competition works, feel free to write them below, and we will keep an eye out for them. And I know most of the crowd watching this are advanced divers. So with each session that passes, I will become less and less annoying. And he will learn more. I'm so if expert. you want to come and talk to him about diving, feel free. In a couple weeks. In a couple weeks. In a couple weeks. <laughs> Don't ask me anything right now. <laughs> So who do we have next, Rachel? So here we have Bianca Kim from Korea. She has announced a constant weight dive of 76 meters, and she has a dive time of two minutes and 15 seconds. So she did do a dive yesterday, same thing, constant weight dive. However, it was to 70 meters. It was a clean dive with a white card, so she's just looking to progress that depth. So Sean, have you had the opportunity to look at the blue hole or the areas around here yet? Yeah, it's beautiful. I think um, what's most fascinating to me is how deep this hole is and it's so close to the beach. Yeah, it is a very short swim to the beach for those of you who have not been here. It is a bit rustic as far as your supplies, so make sure that you bring your snacks and your water. However, it is absolutely beautiful to be able to swim less than 30 seconds and get almost immediate depth. We are surrounded in an amphitheater almost with rocks and we are in a protected area so the waves do not come into this area. Visibility on a good day is over 30 meters or 100 feet for those who use the imperial method. So it is a good way to be able to train here. And you said that this is the second deepest hole? In this the world? is the second deepest hole in the world. The first one is the Dragon Hole in China, which is over 300 meters or 1,000 feet deep. Wow.
20 seconds. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Top time. Plus ten. Bianca Sun Young Kim, Korea, constant weight, seventy six meters. Dive time is 2.15, 2.15. Okay. 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 She's looking smooth. She's now at the 20 meter mark. Some fish safetying Bianca for her dive. She is now at the 60 meter mark. And she has now hit the candy cane and is grabbing a tag. Great. So you know, Sean, it's interesting because I also work as a professional mermaid and it's quite intriguing to see the technique of monofin and how that varies from mermaiding. As you see, she is moving from the hips and trying to keep her upper body still, um, but that propulsion is allowing her to move quite quickly and quite efficiently. Our first safety has just met her on the line. As you see here, when a diver turns, they are kicking quite strong and kicking up to the surface, but as they get further up, they have to do less of that. It's mm. because they're getting positively buoyant. She has flashed the okay sign, is grabbing the tag to show the judges. We are now awaiting the judge response. Congratulations, Bianca. So she has bested her last personal best of 70 meters from yesterday and has now made that 76. And that's quite a difference in free diving, right? Six meters? Yes, six meters is quite a difference. So for those who are used to the Imperial method, 10 meters is 33 feet. So that is going to be significantly deeper than most people are going to be diving on a snorkel. And usually, or when they are free, just snorkeling, but usually when you are training your competition depths, when we're first teaching free divers, they're not going to be pushing for an extended period of time. Wow. Oh, so now we have an interview that is going to be happening on the beach with Francesca, so let's head over there. And I've got Sheena McNally of Canada, and she is the resident representative of Dominica and Blue Element Freediving. Welcome, Sheena. Thank you for starting day two with a white card. Tell us about your dive. Thanks, Francesca. Uh, it was a little bit exciting and nerve-wracking being first. When I saw the start last, last night, I was like, oh no. <laughs> but um, it was actually really calm before, and the dive, I was a bit excited, but it was a good dive. Lots of new experiences with Dive Eye and 
the darkness and the lights at the bottom, but it went smoothly. So Sheena, I know you're here with a pal who is also one of the residents of Dominica. Tell me about how Pageant's been diving and you guys have been here together experiencing Long Island for the first time. Share, share some uh, stories. Mm, that's a dangerous question, asking me to share some stories. Um, but yeah, I'm here with one of my best friends, Pageant. Uh, she's my girl, Woo, Pageant. <laughs> she's gonna dive later this afternoon. She got her first white card yesterday. Uh, I couldn't be doing any of this without her. We haven't explored Long Island too much, but we really like the local people. We took some time to get used to the Blue Hole. Uh, mostly I'm just happy to be with her here experiencing it and doing the best we can. So do you want to reveal any strategy plans? You're just taking it as it comes. What's your dive profile look like for the next five dives? Well, I'm taking it one dive at a time, but um, I can say I didn't bring a monofin, so you won't see any monofin dives from me. I can also say I hate CNF. Sorry to those that love it. I get it. It's just not for me. So you may or may not see CNF from me, <laughs> but you will see bifins and free immersion. So rumor has it, and maybe I bore witness to your really nice bifins dive the other day, perhaps at a level that... Uh, could contend with world records? Nobody knows. <laughs> We're gonna know. <laughs> or not. <laughs> so Sheena, tell us what your logistical, operational, tactical execution of coffee on the island has been. Okay, this is important. Um, there was a power outage this morning at 4.48 a.m. And I woke up and thought, how the heck am I going to boil water to make coffee because our stove is electric? Thank God our little water dispenser had hot water. So that's why I'm here today. Otherwise, I would DNS. But yeah, coffee, it can work with free diving. Um, I use an AeroPress. I recommend it for travel. I drink one cup before my dives. I drink it early. It's fine. I recommend it. <laughs> Who do you want to thank and say hello to? Oh my gosh, I want to say hello to my mom and dad, but they're golfing, so they won't see this. So thank you to my family, my friends, uh, Sufrier Guest House in Dominica, Alchemy for helping me get to this event. Um, who else? I'm missing people for sure. Elios for the wetsuit, Octopus for the lanyard and nose clip, uh, Freedive Utila, my home base in Honduras, Pageant, of course. Hi, Nick Winkler, I know you're watching. <laughs> curly Nick. Yeah, Curly Nick, woo! Um, yeah! Shante. Hi, Nick. <laughs> Nick's awesome. Woo, Canada. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, Sheena. Thanks. Am I free? All right, so now on the line, we have Birgul Irkin from Turkey who has announced a free immersion dive to 74 meters. If done with a white card, then this will be a new national record for Turkey. So Sean, based off of our competition experience from yesterday, what is a free immersion dive? Free immersion dive is no fins and on the ropes. Yep, exactly. So yes. the diver is pulling themselves down the line using their own power, pulling themselves down there. and up the line using their arms. First correct answer I've had since I've been here. Congratulations. Okay, so we have some of that lovely sargassum coming in, that seaweed that causes a little bit of itching. If you're an underwater photographer, it's kind of pretty because some of it is neutrally buoyant and is floating throughout the water column. We need to get one of those pool cleaners out here. Ah, good idea. Clean the arena. Yeah, 
Yeah, so that sargasm is coming in with an incoming tide here. So the tides do come in and out, and that can actually change the visibility that we get inside the blue hole here. Plus 20. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Burgirl Ukin, Turkey, free immersion, 74 meters. Dive time is three minutes, national record attempt. Meters. in De Haag and has broke two national records during competitions in 2020 and 2021. She has two Guinness World Records and has won a silver and bronze medal from the World Cups. She's now at 40 meters and looking strong. So. So it's interesting to note some of the volunteer and ocean conservation projects that a lot of the free divers are involved in. Birgul is now at 60 meters, however she has also worked in her home country of Turkey to teach free diving courses as a volunteer project to get more people interested in free diving. She's at the candy cane. She's touched down and has grabbed a tag and is on her way up. Google is now at 40 meters and working her way up back into the light. 30. 30 and our first safety is here to meet her. Second our second safety has just gone within frame. She looks like she's slowing down a little bit, but once again, it could be because she is becoming more positively buoyant and having to make less effort so she can just float her way to the surface. But we are holding our breaths and seeing what will happen. She's almost there. She is at the surface and doing her recovery breaths. Has flashed the OK sign to the judges, and we are now awaiting their response.
she received a yellow card. And so we are, apparently the judges are going to review this and make a further determination. Do you know what the issue is, Rachel? I'm not quite sure, but we have our judge here who might be able to tell us a little bit more. Um, so, so with that dive, when she came up to the surface, um, her airway was submerged for just a small portion, and in the te in the rules, technically, if the airway is submerged, then we need to review. Um, so for these two judges, they're going to review the circus videos later and come to a deliberation. But from what I've seen, it looks like she was pretty clean, very light submersion, and I don't think it'll be below the ears, which is what it needs to be for disqualification. Okay. Okay. So it, there's a possibility that it'll change to a white card. Yes, so a yellow card is given um, in the event of a early turn or a penalty or in the event where something needs to be reviewed a little bit more. So that's why we're here to review the footage and then they'll review the surface cams as well. Thank you. Great, thanks for that information. So here we have Jarmila Slovenchikova from the Czech Republic. She is doing a constant weight dive to 74 meters. It's interesting to note that she is a physiotherapist and she does most of her training in quarries. So it's also interesting to note that Jarmila did a constant weight dive yesterday to 71 meters and received a white card. So it looks like she's just looking to conservatively progress that depth a little bit further. One minute 30. We are one minute and 30 seconds from official top time. She is submersing her face in the water, possibly to trigger mammalian dive reflex. Sean, do you know what mammalian dive reflex is? Did we get to talk about that yesterday? A little bit, but refresh my memory. All right. So one of the things that happens is when you submerge your face in cold water, it can actually trigger your body's mammalian dive reflex. And one of those things is that it will lower the heart rate so one you minute. can conserve more oxygen. You also have vasoconstriction or constriction of the blood vessels in your periphery, like your arms and your legs, and that can protect your core because the blood gets shunted to your core. And then another interesting fact, do you know what a spleen is? A spleen. A spleen. Yes. It is a reservoir of red blood cells. That spleen contracts, and so that puts more red blood cells into your bloodstream and can help oxygenate your body a little bit. 30 further. seconds. These are all things that divers are training for extended periods of time to make sure that that is working as efficiently as possible so they can dive deep and protect their lungs and their hearts and their 20 ears. seconds. Thank you for that. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Top time.
Plus ten. Okay. Yamila Slavonkova, Czech Republic, constant weight, seventy-four meters. Dive time is two three zero, two thirty. Twenty meters. So it's interesting to note that in a previous competition, Jarmila has done an 86 meter constant weight dive. So sometimes the divers can start conservatively, especially if it's one of their first or second dives, just to make sure that they are in the right mental state. It, it can be, it can produce a lot of positivity when you have a few dives under your belt that you get solid white cards on. And most of these divers, have they been meters. here for a while, training at this hole before the competition, or a lot of them knew within the last week or so? So divers usually show up a few weeks before, and that is, oh, and she's at the candy cane. So let's see if she grabs that tag. She grabbed the tag and is coming back up smoothly to the surface. And yeah, so many of the divers are here several weeks before training. Um, if you are diving in a colder area where you normally train, it's good to come to this area and make sure that your mammalian dive reflex is working properly. It is warm and very comfortable here in the Bahamas. Um, so another thing that the divers can do is train with our safeties. Our safeties are training with the divers for several meters. weeks at a time so they get familiar with each diver's style and really hone in if they think that something could potentially go wrong. 30 meters. She is now at 30 meters and our first safety is now in frame. 20 meters. Second safety. And this is looking super clean so far. And we see the surface in view. Flash the OK sign to the judges and has shown the tag. So now we are just awaiting that response. And it's a white card? She gets the white and that card. That is a white card. Congratulations, Jamila. I don't know about all of the other free divers around the world, but I know that COVID has definitely been a challenge in allowing people to dive on a regular basis. So we are so excited to have the divers here at the competition and that things are going slightly back to normal. So Jarmila's daughter is here and cheering her on and had the opportunity to watch that dive. So it's cool to see that free diving is also a fairly family oriented event here. We do have plenty of families here and some of them have brought their children to come watch these dives. That's good. Okay, so now, thank you so much for joining us, but we are headed to the beach because we have an interview with Francesca. And we're back on the beach with uh, Zappa, otherwise known as Simon Bennett of Chile. Welcome, Simon. Tell us about your dive yesterday. Dive yesterday Hello. was great, thanks. How are you doing? Uh, I was at Kelp Princess, I should call you. Kelpie. Well, history in deeper blue, right? Um, uh, dive was great. I really under-announced. I wanted a white card pretty badly. I have not not very good at getting white cards on the first day of competition, so I did something that made me feel good, and it worked out great, and I was so happy. Of course, you always get the feeling you should have announced more when you get a white card on an easy dive, but happy to get one. 
So you probably, among a very few, have been to almost all, if not all, vertical blues. Tell me how things have changed over the years. That's a big question. I think I, I always tell William I've been to more than him, but that's not actually true. <laughs> I think I missed one. I don't know what happened that year. Yeah, the depths have uh, obviously got a lot deeper. That's kind of obvious, but uh, freediving has got so more professional now. I think the first year that most people were had other jobs, and one of them was a full-time freediver. Now everybody's a full-time freediver, and one guy like me has another job. So more professional, I'd say, more full-time freedivers. So, who are you excited to see uh, at this year's event? We've had a hiatus for about two and a half years. There's some new faces. Tell me, as a freediver, who you're excited to watch. I think uh, it, like there's two things. One is the personality of the person, and the other thing is the disciplines. I think uh, starting on the disciplines, the bifins has been real fun for a lot of people this year. People weren't doing bifins before, and everyone's having a great time with it now, so that's nice to see. It's like a fresh side to freediving, the bifins. And, uh, well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not trying to benefit the women here, but they've been just amazing there. The female divers have just come such a long way and they've closed the gap now between what, what the old men's records were. So, of course, Elena and, and Alessia, amazing. And uh, uh, Alenka, I should say, I'm sorry. <laughs> and so they're doing really good, the women. The women are just kicking butt now. I can't believe it, how deep they're going. So that's what, that's what I would say in general. So um, you are someone who does a lot of spear fishing as well as free diving. And you know, now with the sport coming on in both areas. Tell me about safety and why it's so important and about your experience with the safety here at Vertical Blue. That's a good question, not, not talked about enough anymore. I uh, started as a safety diver here, so I kind of feel for the safety guys and, uh, and I see what's going on here. Um, the safety's been amazing, uh, really professionalized now. And I'll tell you one thing I'd say is, is one thing is to train safety as many times as you want, you can go up and down in a pool, do drills, but the other thing is to really see real life situations and have to attend them. And I think that's what makes a big difference here. I've seen safety divers at big competitions not handle situations very well because they've just never seen it in real life before. Whereas here, the safety team have seen real situations in real life. The medics as well, I mean, amazing. They've all been more professionalized. I mean, to be honest with you, free diving has come a long way in, in 10 or 15 years. We didn't really know what to do uh, 15 years ago, maybe, and now, with the experience we've had in the past 10 years, it's just been a huge change, and uh, we're doing a great job. So tell us about, you're hanging out with this operatic singer, Little Fish. Tell me why the community and the friendships here are so special. Another great question. Well, no, I'll tell you one thing. I've heard some free divers come to Buddy Blue for the first time. Uh, this year and they've said they can't believe how friendly it is and the how how sharing the atmosphere is and how kind everyone is and that's uh that's really what goes on here it's not like a bunch of people competing against each other it's a bunch of friends who meet up on this beautiful island and there's there's a sharing there's the there's the compassion there's the understanding and everybody's really room for each other and that's amazing i don't think it happens in many in many sports wonderful thank you Chile, go Chile. Oye, lo he hecho de menos a todos ustedes. Quiero Chile, le quiero mucho. Pasando por mal rato actualmente, pero aquí estoy con la bandera puesta. Gracias. Thank you. Okay, so we are now back on the dive line where we have Lance Davis from the U.S. Oh, sorry. We are one diver ahead. This is Kihan or Eric Pan. He is from China doing a free immersion dive to 72 meters. So Eric had a very clean white car dive yesterday, so we are looking for a second amazing dive from Eric. 30 seconds. Okay. China, free immersion. 
conversion, 72 meters. Dive time is 250, 250. now doing a free immersion dive, which is where you are pulling yourself down the line. He is now in a free fall. imagine how the pressure changes drastically the farther and farther you're going down. Yeah, absolutely. So for any free divers or new people that are just tuning in, for every 10 meters or 33 feet, you are having the equivalent of the entire Earth's atmosphere pushing down on you. He reaches the candy cane, he has the tag. So at a 70 meter dive, you have eight atmospheres worth of pressure pushing down on you. So a free diver is having to equalize the pressure on their ears, their sinuses, and since he's diving with a mask, his mask, and he is taking all of that air from his lungs and pushing them into the air spaces that are compressible. So Eric is looking super strong on his way back up. And it's interesting to note the different styles for how the free divers pull themselves up the line. Some almost do a modified front crawl stroke, some go from the side, and other ones come from, they have the line between themselves and their forearm and bring themselves up. So it's quite interesting to see these styles. Our first safety is now with Eric and accompanying him up to the surface. Our second safety is in view. bit probably very difficult. Yes, so for the last 10 meters you're having excessive changes in pressure and depth and this is potentially the most challenging part of the dive. That is where a diver can become hypoxic and the pressure changes can cause an LMC. However, Eric is looking super strong, flash that okay sign to the judges and looks super aware. Has his tag in hand, and now we are waiting for the deliberation of the judges. White card. White card. And a white card. That is the second white card for this competition for Eric in a different discipline. Oh, let's do that. Congratulations. Congratulations, Eric. Out. So what are the basic differences between someone who is starting out with diving and advanced? You, you said before that advanced divers, they practice equalizing more. Yeah, so you, this is getting into sort of the lung volumes, and we can start nerding out about that a little bit. Yeah. But as far as the lung volumes, there's a, certain, there's a certain point in time where as the pressure increases, the volume in your lungs and your other air spaces that are compressible in your body decrease. And at a certain point, when you are equalizing to put air, in, air into those air spaces, you start to run out of air to equalize with. So a lot of these advanced free divers are working on their chest flexibility, the intercostal muscles in between their ribs, as well as their diaphragm flexibility, which gets sucked up into the rib cage. So a lot of the divers here are working on that flexibility, and this is something that you actually learn in a free diving course. So we are now at our last diver of the day, or of this session actually. This is Lance Davis from USA. 
Lance does the majority of his training uh, in Redondo, which is in California. He also is around Torrance. And we are giving a shout out to the Redondo Drift Crew who are viewing this competition and cheering him on from the internet. So some interesting facts about Lance. He actually got into freediving through spearfishing and has now gotten into competitions. For those who have been following any of the freediving related media, Lance is also a stunt performer for Avatar. So the new movies that are coming out that will ha feature freediving, Lance is one of those freedivers who have done the stunts for this movie. I know there's a few few other competitors here as well that do, have been doing a lot of stunt work recently. Yeah, and it's been fantastic to see not only are the divers here competitive free divers, but some of them are underwater photographers. Some of them mm -hmm. create a lot of beautiful and fantastic underwater art. Um, so it's great to see that there is so much variability in the world of free diving. Speaking of our one amazing freediving artist, that is Dan Verhoeven. He is an amazing underwater photographer and is doing all of the photography for the athletes for this competition. He's giving his arms a break holding that heavy camera. Done. He's looking super stylish off in the competition corner over there. missed his opportunity to give us his blue steel. His blue steel look? Yep. Oh, oh there we go, now. he's doing it now. two minutes from official top with our last diver of the first session for day two of the vertical blue free diving competition. As you can see on Lance's wrist, that is a Sunto dive computer, which you also see in the middle of the frame. Sunto is one of our sponsors for this competition. We are so thankful for all of our sponsors who are allowing this competition to happen. Sunto.
that okay? So Lance has started his dive, his bifins dive, and he is looking fantastic and super smooth. We are so thankful to have the footage from the dive eye guys here today. It's great being able to see the divers all the way throughout their dive. If you didn't know, the dive eye can actually go down to 200 meters. And as the divers go down in depth, there are actually lights that allow the diver to stay lit up and stay in frame and in view so we can get this amazing, amazing footage. Lance is looking super relaxed. This is the first diver that I have seen with his arms behind his back during free fall. He's, He's looking nice and relaxed. What? He's grabbed the candy cane and is working his way back up with the tag. First safety is now in frame as Lance is working his way back up to the surface. And he has stopped kicking and is working his way up to the surface. He's doing his recovery breaths. Flash his OK sign to the judges. <coughs> He's grabbed that tag. White card. And that is a white card. Congratulations to Lance Lee Davis from the US. That is the last athlete for session one, day two. So we will be returning at 10.50 for our second session of the day. Our first diver of the, first of the second session will be William Truebridge. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for session one of day two of the vertical blue freediving competition. That was our first session as we have said. We will be coming back in just a few minutes with William Trubridge who will be our first diver. However, we are going to head to the beach for a little bit and possibly chat with a few of the freedivers, competitors, and other people that make this organization possible. Thank you so much guys. Thanks for joining us. What was that? I leave this with you, Mish. Yeah, I, I might have to put it here because I'm going to be swimming. Yeah. If, if I... Hey, everyone. Welcome to Vertical Blue 2021. We're here on Long Island in the beautiful Bahamas, and we are here in one of the most incredible freediving spots in the world, Dean's Blue Hole. It's over 600 feet deep, and it has incredible structure. And most importantly for the freedivers, it has no current, very little wind, and during low tide, if we time it correctly, we get up to 45 meters of visibility. Hi, my name's Enchante. I am here to compete in Vertical Blue 2021. I'm from Hawaii, so I'm representing the United States. So, uh, 
yeah, the reason that I'm here is I actually was able to place in the top 10, so I got an invite to be part of the Freediving World Series. I'm really stoked to be here. It's my first time diving in Dean's Blue Hole, and it's beautiful. It's nice diving where there's no current, waves. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm Thibaut Guignes, I am from France and I'm here for the Vertical Blue 2021 competition. But of course, as a freediver, beginner and even professional, I was following Vertical Blue over the past few years because it's like the most famous freediving competition and I was lucky enough to participate in 2018 uh, edition where I had a very, very good experience, so I couldn't wait to be back. Uh, and now it's happening again, so I'm really happy to be here. One of the best things about being here in the Bahamas at Dean's Blue Hole is being able to not just enjoy the incredible nature, but the wonderful people of Long Island and the Bahamas. We will be sitting here beachside eating fresh conch salad and while you might not be able to taste it, we really want you to stay tuned. So please send on your cheering and your encouragement. The free divers really appreciate it. And if you get a chance someday, come to Dean's Blue Hole in Long Island in the Bahamas.
everyone, and welcome to session two of day two of the Vertical Blue Freediving Competition. My name is Rachel. And this is Sean. And we are here to watch the deepest dive of the day. Our first diver is William Truebridge with an announced dive time of, or dive depth of 115 meters. So we are one minute and 30 seconds from official top. We are going to remain quiet while he gets ready for his dive and we will chat with you once he has gone below the surface. Thirty seconds. Twenty seconds. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two. One, top time. Plus ten. Plus twenty. William Truebridge, New Zealand, free immersion, 115 meters, dive time is 3 minutes 50 seconds, 350. Okay. And William Truebridge of New Zealand has dipped below the surface for his free immersion dive of 115 meters. This is going to be the deepest dive of the deepest session of the day, and so we are just going to follow his dive and see how he does. So William is wearing an Orca wetsuit, which is one of our sponsors for this competition. Orca started out with triathlon wetsuits and have now moved into the competitive freediving arena. So we are over one minute into the dive and he is at 59 meters. So Sean, as I told you before, as the body gets compressed at depth, the air spaces in the body also compress. So as you're starting to see at these depths, William has a lot of diaphragm flexibility. You can see along his abdomen that his abdomen is getting sucked further and further into his rib cage. Mm -hmm. He has now hit the candy cane and is going for that tag. There he goes and is now heading his way to the surface.
William is now at 70 meters and our first safety has gone down to meet him. Seeing a little bit of that sunlight popping through now. Our first safety is in sight and escorting William to the surface. Our second safety is now escorting him to the surface. Doing his recovery breaths. And we are now awaiting the judge deliberation. Congratulations to Will Truebridge of New Zealand with a white card deliberation for his free immersion dive of 115 meters. Next step. Next step. Next step is 99, coming in 99.8. 99.8. Has that been the deepest depth free immersion yeah. dive so far? So far, as far as world records, or I actually know the, the competition. Ah, okay. I'm actually not quite sure, but I could get back to you on that. I don't have those statistics in front of me. But it is interesting to note that for these particular dives, you'll see that a lot of the divers are as relaxed as possible, especially for the free immersion dive. When you're stretching your arm up over your body, mm -hmm. you are exposing your body to a lot of stresses. If you're stretching too much and you don't have the flexibility, especially at those depths when your air spaces are very compressed, you can predispose yourself to injury. So this is another reason why divers are progressing very, very slowly in their depths and making sure that they are able to protect their airways and keep their lungs safe. So our next diver is Hanako Hirose of Japan. And I will get you her dive depth and announce dive time. She is doing a constant weight dive of 98 meters with a projected dive time of 3 minutes and 10 seconds. Safeties are adjusting the dive line currently to make sure that it is at the recommended depth or the projected depth. So you can't see him right here for Sajiko and his family in New Zealand. William just wanted to say thank you for watching that dive and supporting him. To dive that far with no fins is incredible.
So this is Hanako's first dive of the competition. And for those who are just joining us, each freediver has six dives that they can possibly do during this competition. Hanako is the second diver of this session out of three sessions for the day. And as I said before, she's doing a constant weight dive of 98 meters. So when you practice free diving, Rachel, what uh, what discipline do you usually? Um, so I've really enjoyed constant weight, uh, especially with bifins. fins. I feel like it's a very good workout. However, I've also recently gotten into constant weight no fins, uh, especially at those depths where you are negatively buoyant. It is very humbling and very intriguing to feel yourself kicking up to the surface and sinking back a little bit, kicking up to the surface and sinking back down again. Um, so it's really humbling and it makes you so much more aware of your body when you're getting to train constantly with no fins. So we are less than one minute from an official top and Hanako is getting ready for her dive on the dive line. Waiting the judge to look. So Hanako is now at 30 meters into her constant weight dive, and she is equalizing. It's interesting to note that her personal best that I was able to pull off of the internet is 106 meters, so she is going below her personal best in a previous competition. However, this is the first of six dives in the competition. This is the first time I've actually seen a diver put her hand over her mouth. I'm not quite sure why that could be, but maybe there is a possibility that when you're equalizing, you want to just make sure that not even the tiniest amount of air escapes out of your mouth. That air is precious down there for equalizing. She hits the candy cane. And she is working her way back up.
So it's interesting to note that Hanako has an announced dive time of 3 minutes and 10 seconds. It is 2 minutes and 23 seconds into her dive and she is still at 54 meters. She is still looking smooth and our safeties are going down to meet her down at depth. Our first safety has met her at 30 meters. She is at 255. And so far, everything is looking fantastic. Hanako is almost at the surface. has immediately started her recovery breaths. She is turning around to say hello to the judges. And she has received a white card. Congratulations to Hanako. She has received a white card for her constant weight dive of 98 meters. And I just wanted to bring attention to the safeties in this competition. So the dive time is very important because it gives the safeties a projected idea of where to expect you and when to know if something is going right or wrong. If a diver is diving slower than they projected, then it's a sign that the safeties need to be very much more on their guard, <coughs> even though they're already on their guard already. We have seven safeties here, three of which are in the water. Many have run their own competitions or have been safeties for these depth competitions over, this, over several years in the past. So interesting, so the dive time is the time that the athlete itself says they're going to complete the dive. Yeah, so as we've said before, an average dive time is usually around one meter per second. So you can have kind of an estimation of when the diver should be coming back up from the surface. This is something that we actually do when we're training just for fun, like for example, some of my training buddies in Las Vegas, especially if we have poor visibility the diver will go down and you'll actually meet them at depth and be able to escort them during the most dangerous parts, which is the last part of the dive. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a penalty for not making the dive time or is that just for the safety team to know? Um, that would actually be something that we'd want to defer to our judges on and maybe we'll have the opportunity to interview them later today. Sounds good. So our next diver is Alejandro Lemieux. He is doing a constant weight dive of 98 meters. This is a national record attempt. It's interesting to note that he actually achieved a national record during his dive yesterday of 95 meters. He got a white card, and so he is looking to get another national record. So first dive, starting off strong. Yeah, first dive, first dive starting off strong, and it's interesting to note that you can actually get more than one national record. As we saw yesterday, we have divers can go back and forth trying to get a national or a world record, or they can compete against themselves.
So we are two minutes from it from official top. Alejandro is getting ready for his dive. It's interesting to note that Alejandro trains in Mexico in the cenotes and is an organizer of the Zibalba freediving competition. He's also a pranayama and cave diving instructor for anybody who might be interested in that. And this is his seventh time at Vertical Blue. Alejandro Lemus, Mexico, constant weight, 98 meters, dive time is 3 minutes, national record attempt. Okay, so Alejandro has begun his constant weight dive. Once again, this is a national record attempt, and it's interesting to note that Alejandro has held most of the Mexican national records since 2012. So he is now in the free fall or the sink phase. And this is the most relaxing part of a dive. It looks very meditative. So for those who've never been to Mexico, there are these freshwater caves called cenotes, and they can be very, very deep. Uh, the good thing about it for a free diver is that it has much more stable conditions than diving out in open ocean. You don't have current, you have the same level of visibility, and the temperatures usually stay constant. Uh, I would love to have the opportunity to free dive in a cenote at some point. So Alejandro is at 88 meters now, 10 more meters until his projected diving depth. He's hitting the candy cane. And he is reaching for the tag, and is on his way back up again. Alejandro has his arms up over his head and is powering up to the surface. And as you can see here, a monofin is a very, very powerful fin. He is racing up to the surface and the dive eye is keeping him in frame and catching up. Our safeties are getting ready to meet him at the 30 meter mark. There they are. Our second safety is in frame. He 
He is motioning to the divers. He's doing his recovery breaths. He looks very alert and aware and is making eye contact with the judges, has presented that tag. And we are waiting on... White card. Excellent. He has just received another white card. This is another national record for Alejandro Lemus. Congratulations. So he broke his own from yesterday. He broke his own national record. Wow. For everyone who is just now joining us, this is session two of day two of the Vertical Blue Freediving Competition. Uh, we are partway through session two, and so far it has been fantastic watching these divers. What do you think so far? It's been amazing in the sea. Alejandro just break his own record from yesterday's. Yeah, so awesome. if you didn't get to watch the competition yesterday, we had four world records, and now we have plenty of national record attempts and national records that we've gotten today. So our safeties are now pulling up the line for our next diver, who is Daniel Koval from the USA. Daniel is doing a free immersion dive to 95 meters. So Daniel is a six-time USA national record holder. He is an FII freediving instructor from Oahu. So for any of those people who are wanting to get into freediving in the US, Hawaii is a very interesting place to get started. Plenty of free divers and spectators around the competition area watching his dive and cheering him on. So we have four athletes going for national records this session. Two minutes.
Now, is training in different water temperatures, is that, are, are there pros and cons to that? Yeah, so there are, it's not necessarily pros and cons, it's just whatever area is most One accessible to you. So when you're training for long periods of time and you want to get constant depth and consistent dive conditions, mm -hmm. um, it's very important to have that in a place where, so you can continue pursuing these depths. For him, he is able to live in Hawaii, which has beautiful dive conditions, but many of these competitors are going to places like Dahab, Hung Lao in the Philippines. Dahab is actually in Egypt. Um, and some people are actually headed to Indonesia. A lot of these places have One minute. significantly close to the shore or they have the infrastructure to take people out to depth. And a lot of them are places where divers can train for a little bit, where you can get more bang for your buck. And I'll bring this up after this dive, but there were a few competitors we talked to who were diving in very cold waters. That is true. 30 seconds. Twenty seconds. Ten seconds. Okay, so Dan is now at 20 meters into his free immersion dive. And now that he's underwater, we could possibly talk about water temperatures and what questions did you have? Yeah, so there were a couple competitors I talked to who train in five millimeter wetsuits. Yes. I can only imagine how different it is to hold your breath in water that cold than to come here to the Bahamas where the water's significantly warmer. You know, I grew up surfing in cold water and the difference that I could feel when I would surf in 35 degree water to traveling was obviously drastic. So I can only imagine that that would be a huge difference when you're traveling and competing as opposed to traveling at your home location. That is true and that's why a lot of the free divers show up multiple weeks before the competition. Oh, and he is uh, turning at 70 meters. And if you see there, he was making some facial movements. Maybe he possibly had some equalization issues. So this is something to consider, especially when you're talking about cold temperatures. Mm -hmm. We are going fr from cold temperatures to warmer temperatures, so this is less likely to be an issue. But sometimes divers can have issues in cold waters. And so, not only uh, are the cold water, is the cold water potentially an issue, but it's also going from cold water where you are triggering a mammalian dive reflex, which we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. You're having to get used to the warmer water to make sure that your body is still triggering that mammalian dive reflex properly. So we are now at less than 20 meters into the end of his dive. The safeties are accompanying him to the surface and he's still looking pretty strong. So he is now pointing at his right ear. Looks like he was having trouble equalizing that right ear there. He still looked super clean though. He looked strong, not hypoxic. And he's complaining of a uh, right ear popping. 
So it looks like he's headed out of the competition area. And we do have a very well-trained medical team here. We have two respiratory therapists, EMTs and, form and nurses on staff. So he'll probably head over to the medic tent. And as every free diver does after their uh, attempt, they will go for evaluation to the medical tent. Hello everybody, if you're just joining us, my name is Rachel Novak. I am a freediving instructor in Miss Mermaid Nevada. And I'm Sean Russell Herman, and I am a comedian. Yes, so Sean is learning about freediving with all of you who might be our new viewers, who might be interested in getting into freediving. And just so you know, we are looking at the comments, so if you have any questions for the competitors, if we have the opportunity, we will be looking through them and trying to interview the competitors at a future time. Up until about two days ago, I thought this was a free diving, jumping off a diving board. Oh, yeah. Doing backflips, 360s. Yeah. So, yeah. This, so was, uh, this was not what I expected. <laughs> so, they originally brought him on because he has no free diving experience whatsoever and wanted to be able to have him ask questions and learn along with the rest of you. I was actually told to not do any research whatsoever. So, if I'm annoying you today and yesterday, It'll be less and less as we go along. Yeah. Okay, so our next diver is Pepe Salcedo from Mexico. And the divers are, or the safety team here is pulling up the line and getting ready for his dive at his announced depth. So let me get that for you. Pepe. Pepe is from Mexico. He is doing a free immersion dive to 94 meters. This is a national record attempt. So as I said before, Pepe is from Mexico and he gets to train and teach his courses in the cenotes in Mexico. He is accompanied by his lovely girlfriend Denise who is there cheering him on next to the competition corner. We are three minutes from the official top. As you can see here, Pepe is putting on a nose clip. Sean, did you learn anything about nose clips yesterday? Uh, yeah, it helps with equalizing, correct? And stops the water from rushing up your nose. 
Yeah, so the primary part is that it helps you to equalize. So he is doing a free immersion dive where you are pulling yourself down the line. So when you're pulling yourself down the line, one less thing to worry about when you're wearing a nose clip is having to put your hand on your nose, pinch, and mm -hmm. blow. So now he has the nose clip to do that for him, and he's just able to safely pull himself down the line and have one less one thing to worry about. One minute and 30. So we are one minute and 30 seconds from official top. He is floating face up and getting ready for his dive. He's beginning to pack. Is that correct? One minute. Yes. So when you see that could also just potentially be a warm-up for him if you pack and you can stretch your lungs a little bit but for those who don't know what packing is uh, packing is where you take a full inhale of air and your lungs are completely full and in order to get more air into your lungs you can sip the air and push it down into your lungs this is an advanced equalization technique and if you don't have formal free diving experience please don't do this seconds. this is an advanced equalization technique and you need to have additional training to be able to do this safely. 20 seconds. So we are 20 seconds from official top. And we will be quiet until he has submerged below the surface. 10 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Top time. below the surface. Canada, Salcedo, Mexico, pre-immersion, 94 meters, dive time is 3.15, national record attempt. So this is Pepe's second dive of the competition. Yesterday he had a free immersion dive attempt to 96 meters with a red card. Maybe we'll have the opportunity to talk to him about that. Um, but right now he's at 40 meters and he is looking strong. there for the short little clip that we were able to see his throat moving. One of the things that you learn when you're getting deeper into free diving. Oh, and he has an early turn at 92 meters. Just before. Just before. So close. Just to finish that thought there, he was equalizing. You could see the throat moving. That is an advanced equalization technique where you're pistoning, pistoning the muscles in your throat to push air up into your ears, your sinus, and your mask. To and keep in your ears, case, to keep your ears from popping. Well, to keep your ear, to keep your eardrums nice and flexed. There's water pressure pushing on the outside of your ear, and you need air to push on the other side. So the first deep safety has met him at 30 meters and is accompanying him to the surface. Our second safety is now in view. He 
he's doing his recovery breaths. Okay. Flash the okay sign to the judges. Is a yellow card. So at that time when he was at the bottom, he couldn't, obviously his eyes weren't open, so he had no idea how close he was to the um, candy, well, like, candy candy. And you know, that is another thing, one thing that you're trained to do when you're first getting into free diving is never look down the line. Mm -hmm. If you're looking down the line to see where you are, you can potentially predispose yourself to something called a throat squeeze. So at those extreme pressures, your almost your lung volumes and the air volumes in your air spaces are much smaller, so you can stretch those areas and potentially damage them. So yes, he did not look down at the line, um, and you know he was so close. Uh, but that is that is a possibility with this dive. Fortunately, it's his second dive out of six dives for this entire competition. So if he wants to, he has the opportunity to attempt this dive again. Okay. And now we are going to be headed to the beach with Francesca, who's going to be doing an interview. Hi guys, we're back on the beach and we're here with our host and athlete, William Truebridge, who just did a beautiful, and he says easier for him, but not for anyone else, 115 meter free immersion dive. William, tell us about your dive this morning. Yeah, there's still a few other people for whom it's easier. <laughs> um, but um, no, it was, it was a good dive. Um, I was happy with it. I, going into it, the first day for me is, is, always, um, is always difficult because the lead up to the event, there's so much other stuff that I have to do. I'm running around and um, wearing my organizer hat, I guess. And, and so to kind of switch that off and become an athlete um, always means that I have to take a step back a little bit. Um, but um, the dive felt good actually, um, especially the ascent. I was able to get into that kind of dreamy state where you're just, you're not worried or thinking about arriving on the surface. You just um, focus on the technique and relaxing and, and passing the time. Um, so yeah, it was nice to be able to hit that, that feeling on the first dive. So day one under our belts, four world records. Talk to me about what you're seeing from the women, especially incredible field of competitors. Yeah, day one was just epic. I don't think we've ever seen anything like that in vertical blue history, maybe even in the history of the event uh, of freediving. Um, so to see four world records uh, and strong world records as well, um, all of them were, were very clean, long dives. Um, it was just incredible. Um, Alexi with a four minute 45 dive um, in free immersion is, is just insane. Um, and the girls um, were, are just like crushing it. <laughs> to add like two, three meters at a time to the world record is on the first day is, is just unreal. Uh, and it seems like they've still got more in the tank. So I think we can probably expect some more fireworks from them as well. Um, but no, look, it's, it, as a first day of the event, um, it really did start with a bang. So we have about 42 competitors from 20 different countries. Uh, tell me why it's so important for this event to represent how freediving can be expanded into the world of sports, Olympics, and even for recreational freedivers. Yeah, we've always, always had like a very good, um, a good representation here at, at Vertical Blue. So uh, 21 different countries. We cap it at 42 athletes. That's the maximum that we can kind of hold for this event. So we invite all the top top ranked athletes first. 
and um, yeah, it's it's great to see every pretty much every continent represented, um, and um, some a, a diver from the host country as well, um, setting Bahamian records for the women. Um, so all of that is is marvelous. Talk to me about the safety and medical team. Your chief of safety, Marco Cosentino, has been here for many, many years. Tell me about all the work they do and why it is a hallmark and a standard. Uh, yeah, the safety team are uh, um, like a top group and they're led by Marco Cosentino, who's been here at Vertical Blue pretty much since the inception. Um, I think his first year was 2009, uh, 12 years ago and um, he's leading them from the top. And it's not just a safety team as well. Like, they're not just doing the safety dives, they're also setting up the whole competition site, setting up all the equipment and the lights and the cameras and um, running around behind the scenes, doing other tasks. So it doesn't stop for them once, once the last divers uh, show their card. They're, they're still working for a few more hours. They're here a couple of hours before any of the athletes show up in the morning. Um, they're working round the clock tirelessly and, and yeah, they deserve all the praise they get. So just quickly before we... Okay, and welcome back to our free diving competition. Here on the dive line, we have Alice Modolo. She is from France. And she is going to be doing a constant whip weight by fins dive to 92 meters. National record. So Elise has begun her dive, and as Sean has said, this is a national record attempt of 92 meters. It's interesting to note that Elise is a dentist, however she has quit that position so she can pursue freediving full time. And I know that we were chatting a little bit before about some of the artistic projects that Elise, or that our, all of our freedivers have been involved in. She was actually in, featured in the Beyonce music video called Run In. So anybody who wants to look up any freediving in pop culture can look up Elise in Beyonce's music video Run In. Elise is now at 60 meters with a dive time of 102. And she is in the free fall or the sink phase. Elise has 23 national records and she is hoping to make this 24. So our fingers are crossed for you and we are looking forward to seeing this happen. She's hit the candy cane. Touchdown and grabbed a tag. Nice. She's tucking it into her hood and has her arms up and is reaching for the surface. The first of our safety team has gone down to meet her. The second of our safeties is headed down now. now at 34 meters. She is working her way to the service.
Elise has just now surfaced. She's facing the judges. She has flashed the OK sign. And we are waiting to see what the judges have to say. It's a white card. So Elise has received a white card. That is a new national record in the constant weights division of 92 meters. Congratulations. So once again, that was diver number six of session two, Alice Morolo of France. She has just received a white card and a new national record. We have two more divers for this session. And once again, we are so thankful for our sponsors that allow this competition to happen. We have Orco wetsuits, Sunto, our dive computers, and Double K free diving buoys. Without our sponsors, this dive competition could not happen. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So these national records, it's all about the depth. It has nothing to do with whether it's free immersion or um, bifins or monofins. It's just the depth itself? No, actually it is in the discipline. Okay. Um, so for there are different disciplines. Uh, for those who are just now joining us, there are several different disciplines in free diving, and especially for this particular competition for depth, we have our constant weight division, which is where a diver is going down with either a monofin or bifins, and that is the ultimate depth, whether it is a monofin or a bifin for this particular competition. We have free immersion, where the diver is pulling themselves up and down the line of their own accord, and then we also have constant weight no fins, where the free diver is using a modified breast fin stroke to get down and up the line. So you can have a national record in any of these particular divisions. And as we've seen earlier today, you can actually have your own, you can actually beat your own national record. Yeah. So here we have Mimi or Misusu Akamoto from Japan. She is going to be doing a constant weight dive with a monofin and that is going to be 85 meters with a projected dive time of 2 minutes and 45 seconds. So that's my question then is if the monofin seems to be the fin that works best for depth, so why if it's in the same category are, are some people using bifins? You know that is a really good question and it could possibly do with the idea that we have two particular agencies, ADA and CMAS who the records are being hosted through. Uh, we will have the opportunity to talk about that at a further point, um, but maybe we'll get to talk with the judges uh, in a little bit. Sounds good. So we are less than two minutes from official top and once again this is Mimi's first dive of the entire competition. It is a constant weight dive with a monofin to 85 meters. One minute thirty.
One minute. So Sean, this is outside of the scope of this particular competition since this is a depth competition, but there are other disciplines that we'll have the opportunity to talk about. And those actually are in a pool. So you have static where you're holding your breath as long as possible. You have dynamic with either a monofin or bifins. And you also have dynamic with no fins. Okay. So it's taking this and putting it all horizontal. Here are 30 seconds from official top time. And Mimi is getting ready for her dive. 20 seconds. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Top time. Mizuzu Okamoto, Japan. Constant weight, 85 meters. Dive time is 2.45. Puts her hand over her mouth. This is a possibility meters. of making sure that she's able to keep air. But yeah, once again, for any new viewers out there, this is our first time seeing these divers. And so we are learning a little bit more about their style and technique and what is normal for them. 50 meters, 45 seconds. Mimi is looking nice and relaxed as she goes meters. into the depths. She is now at 62 meters and descending. Sean, as you see here, the monofin is a fairly big fin, so she is having the dive line to her right side. Let's make sure that that stays out of the way. She hit the candy cane, is grabbing a tag, and is working her way back up. Arms are up, and she is powering to the surface. 70 meters. first of our safeties has gone down. Our second safety is now descending to meet her. 50 meters. Two minutes. 40 meters. First of our safety divers accompanying her to the surface. 20 meters. Sean, as you see here, the diver is slightly below her, but still within an arm's reach of her. Just in case something does happen, they're able to approach very quickly. Um, but the diving position is important because if you are below, it's easier to swim up and grab a diver as opposed to being above, having to dive back down and then grab the diver to bring them up. So Mimi has surfaced, is flashing the okay sign to the judges, I'm okay. and has a huge <laughs> smile on her face. She's hunting around for that tag. It's very important to not lose that, so she has definitely secured it. Congratulations to Mimi for a white card on her constant weight dive to 85 meters. Great job.
Mine stays the same. Mine is oh, okay. So no changing of okay. the depth right now. It's going to be the same, same depth dive. So our next diver is Jay Ku from Taiwan with a constant weight five fins dive of 85 meters. As you can see here, the divers are actually, they, whenever they pull up, or the safety divers pull up the line, it is easier to drop the line to the deepest depth and then pull it up as opposed to dropping it. However, it's convenient for them when both divers before and after are diving to the same depth. So this is actually Jake who's second dive of the competition. Hello everybody and thank you again for joining us. This is the last dive of session two of the day two of the vertical blue freediving competition. My name is Rachel. And I'm Sean. And we are here at our last diver who is Jay Koo from Taiwan. Jay Koo is going to be doing a constant weight by fins dive to 85 meters and yesterday got a white card and a national record for a free immersion dive to 101 meters. And this dive is also for a national record. That is correct. Okay, you have four So speaking of Taiwan, there are two freediving podcasters who are based in Taiwan right now. Ray, or Freedive Nomad, and Donnie Mack of Freedive Cafe. Both of them have some very amazing podcasts about this particular freediving competition. If you want to learn more about the safety team, the medic team, or just how to view a freediving competition yourself. So once again, go check out those guys if you want to learn more. Free Dive Cafe and Free Dive Nomad on Spotify and other podcast formats. Have you found a common theme of how most of these athletes got into free diving? They start with spear fishing, you know, it's actually, swimming. It's actually been quite interesting seeing the different versions and reasons why people got into free diving. From the few that I've gotten to talk to, Two um, some have been competitive swimmers or competitive athletes in the past. Others started out enjoying free diving just for fun and got into the competitions. And then there are a few that actually started as more of the watermen, so the Spiros or the sailors who found freediving to be compatible for their current lifestyle and yep. to be able to further their current lifestyle. So you're actually a surfer, correct? Yeah, yeah, I used to be a professional surfer. And so have you ever One actually had to do an extended breath hold, like with the big waves? Yes, yeah, I used to train a lot of breath work, um, but it was a little bit different. We would actually grab weights underwater and run with them, build an endurance up that way. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah and so some of the free divers are also instructors here, and they do specialize in teaching surfers a little bit more about holding, extending their breath holds for surfing. Um, so yeah, as you've said, 
there are so many reasons why people can get into free diving and there are so many subsets of the free diving community that people can get involved in. Yeah, I wish I knew about this a while ago. It would have helped me in my surfing career, I think, a lot. So we are one less, less than one minute until official top time for Jay Koo, our last freediver for session two of day two of the Vertical Blue freediving competition. Thirty seconds. Twenty seconds. Record attempt. Into her constant weight five fins dive. She is descending to the depths with a goal of 85 meters. meters. 30 seconds. 30 meters. Jaku is now at over 60 meters, has her hand to her nose to equalize, and as you see here, her chin is nice and tucked. Once again, when you are at depths, you're needing to make sure that you protect your trachea, any extensions of that head and stretching of the neck can predispose you to injury, so she has a nice tucked chin. And she has hit the candy cane. She's grabbed that tag and is headed to the surface. Our first safety is going down to meet her. Our second safety is going down to meet her. She's at 50 meters, arms up, looking strong. As you see here, a lot of the competitive freedivers um, have a very strong front and back kick with their bifin. As you're a beginner freediver, it's important to not have a bicycle kick, which is what it's called. You're not getting as much efficiency with your kick if you're doing that. So Jayku is now at the surface, has flashed the OK sign, and is grabbing that tag.
And congratulations to Jaku. That was the last diver of session two. Making it look easy. Hello everyone, thanks again for joining us for session two of day two of the Vertical Blue Freediving Competition. My name is Rachel Novak, I am a freediving instructor in Miss Mermaid Nevada. My name is Sean Russell Herman and I am a comedian. And we will see you for session three in just a moment. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey everyone, welcome to Vertical Blue 2021. We're here on Long Island in the beautiful Bahamas and we are here in one of the most incredible free diving spots in the world, Dean's Blue Hole. It's over 600 feet deep and it has incredible structure and most importantly for the free divers, it has no current, very little wind and during low tide, if we time it correctly, we get up to 45 meters of visibility. Hi, my name is Enchante. I am here to compete in Vertical Blue 2021. I'm from Hawaii, so I'm representing the United States. So, uh, yeah, the reason that I'm here is I actually was able to place in the top 10, so I got an invite to be part of the Freediving World Series. I'm really stoked to be here. It's my first time diving in Dean's Blue Hole and it's beautiful, it's nice diving where there's no current, waves, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm Thibaut Guignes, I am from France and I'm here for the Vertical Blue 2021 competition. Of course, as a freediver, beginner, and even professional, I was following Vertical Blue over the past few years because it's like the most famous freediving competition. And I was lucky enough to participate in 2018 uh, edition where I had a very, very good experience. So I couldn't wait to be back. Uh, and now it's happening again. So I'm really happy to be here. One of the best things about being here in the Bahamas at Dean's Blue Hole is being able to not just enjoy the incredible nature, but the wonderful people of Long Island and the Bahamas. We will be sitting here beachside eating fresh conch salad. And while you might not be able to taste it, we really want you to stay tuned. cheering and your encouragement the free divers really appreciate it and if you get a chance someday come to Dean's Blue Hole in Long Island in the Bahamas
everybody, and thank you so much for joining us for session three of the Vertical Blue Freediving Competition. My name is Rachel Novak. I am a freediving instructor and Miss Mermaid Nevada. My name is Sean Russell Herman, and I am a comedian. And so we are learning about diving together while watching all of these amazing competitors here today. So once again, this is session three of day two. Well, I'm learning. You, you already know. It's actually been really interesting because I am learning a lot about the competitive freedivers themselves. You have a lot of the physiology, but I personally have not seen or met many of these freedivers personally, so it's really interesting getting to see their styles. Okay, so our first diver is from the USA. His name is Ben Zions. He is doing a CNF dive, or a no fins dive, to 70 meters. Hello everybody, if you are just joining us, we are starting or getting ready for Ben Zions of the US. He's going to be doing a dive. We are about two minutes from official top time. Ben Zion is a 36 year old from the US and he is currently residing in Kona. Uh, so he started from a tradition of fishermen and he's been a huge water person. So he's supported himself doing trade jobs and repairing boats, um, but he got into competitive freediving and is now here today at Vertical Glue. So this is Ben's first dive of the freediving competition and if you are just now joining us, each freediver has six opportunities to progress in their depths and they can do it in whatever discipline they announce. 30 seconds. So we are 30 seconds from official top, so I'm going to be quiet and get let Ben get ready for his dive. So now we have Ben Zions in view. He is doing a constant weight no fins dive to 70 meters. 20 meters. Five, 
and just from personal experience, it has been really intriguing watching no fins. I feel like it is a very humbling discipline and one of the most demanding disciplines is you don't have the assistance of bifins or a monofin. 40 meters. Fifty meters. Ben is now at the fifty meter 40. mark and in free fall. Sixty meters. And he has touched down and grabbed a tag. 60 meters, 130. Our safety is going down to meet him. So we are now at 41 meters. Our safeties are on the way to meet him. And he is very fast right now in his frequency. This is the first, in, first no fins dive that I've seen so far. And he is kicking very quickly. Once again, this is he So once again, this is the first time that I have seen him dive so I don't know that this is normal for his style so it's really intriguing to watch and just see what his dive style is over the next few dives so it looks like he is having an issue right now the safeties are there and they are helping him to the surface we are fairly close to the surface both safeties are bringing him up they have him up and they are clearing his airway and giving him rescue breaths so he is doing, they're giving him rescue breaths right now, and they're bringing him to the platform. Hello everybody and welcome again to Vertical Blue. And we are just now finishing the dive of Ben Zions. He did have a blackout, but our safety team is very well prepared to take care of him. If you haven't gotten to see that dive, we had two of our safeties come up and bring him very quickly to the surface. They are now giving him oxygen on the platform. So occasionally blackouts and losses of motor control do happen when people are pushing themselves to these extreme levels. However, in a freediving competition, this is the safest time for people to be pursuing their personal best. We have a perfectly trained safety team here. And then on top of that, we have a medical tent where we have two respiratory therapists. And it looks like I am getting a thumbs up and an okay from the safeties on the platform. Ben is doing well. They are going to be giving him oxygen. And once again, as I've said before, we have a very well-trained medical team on, on the beach. We have two respiratory therapists, an EMT and nurses. And then we also are paired up with the clinic over in Clarence Town. Um, that is the nearby clinic, so everybody here is able to train, is trained to autonomously, autonomously handle these dives and potential issues with losses of motor control and blackout. So as you see here on the camera, we have our spectators and our safeties are going to be transporting him when they give him the okay to head over to the medical tent. And so from the little bit that we've been learning here, our safety, we have several different parts of the safety team. So we have our three safeties in the water and then we also have our safety team here on the platform. That yellow box that you see right there is pure oxygen. So anytime there is a free diving related incident, the diver does have the opportunity to breathe 100% oxygen to make sure that they are staying oxygenated. 
and then once the safety team gives the diver the okay, they will head over to the medical tent for further evaluation. If you are just now joining us, this is session three of day two of the Vertical Blue Freediving Competition. We have just finished our first dive with Benjamin Zion with a constant weight, no fins dive of 70 meters. Our next dive is going to be Talia, and she's doing a free immersion dive to 66 meters. Talia is representing South Africa. However, she is based in Oregon, where she trains in very, very cold waters in the Hood River Canal, or in the Hood Canal. She is the first South African to compete in the CMAS competition. And she did an amazing dive yesterday as well. So we're looking forward to seeing more amazing, another amazing dive from her today. communicate 10 minutes delay 10 minutes delay to all the athletes thank you So I just wanted to let you know that we are going to have a 10 minute break. So stay tuned and we will see you in 10 minutes for more amazing dives from these divers.
Line is set. It's
Hello everybody and welcome back to session three of the Vertical Blue Freediving Competition. This is day two and we have Talia Davidoff who is about to begin her CNF dive of 66 meters. So if you didn't hear that on the platform, this is a national record attempt. This is Talia's second attempt at a national record. Yesterday she attempted one in a constant weight by fins to 64. She did receive a white card and that was a national record as of yesterday. She is currently at 30 meters during her dive. And once again, this is a 66 meter dive, also a national record attempt. For those of you who can't hear, she is now at 50 meters. She is now at 60 meters. So she has turned and is on her way back up again. She is now at 40 meters and on her way back up again. So constant weight no fins is one of the most difficult forms and it is one of the most demanding. Once again, you do not have the propulsion of your bi fins or your mono fin to get you to and from the surface. Our safety has met her at the 30 meter mark and our second safety will be there soon. red hat you saw was from one of our judges who's moved out of the way so Talia can come up along the line and there she is doing her recovery breaths she has given the okay sign to the judges shown her tag and now we are awaiting the judge response <laughs> And they have given her a white card. So huge congratulations to Talia. This is her second national record for just this competition. So two out of two dives, two out of two national records. We are hoping to get the chance to interview her after this. So stay tuned so we can chat to her about her amazing success. So as you can see here, our safeties are setting, they are setting the line. Our next diver is going to be Camila Haber or Javer. I apologize for the pronunciation. She is from Mexico. She's going to be doing a constant weight bifins dive to 64 meters with a projected dive time of two minutes and 15 seconds. This is a national record attempt. Okay, 
So while we are waiting for Camila to get ready, I have Talia here right now. Hello everybody and thank you for joining us. So here we have Talia. Tell us where you are from. Right, uh, I'm from South Africa. I'm from a, a little town called Outsuren, which is a desert town. We do not have water there. How um, do you free dive? <laughs> with immense difficulty. Um, no, we actually, I used to, when I was in Cape Town, I'd go out to, I um, mean, when I was in Otoan, I'd go out and train in Cape Town in a quarry. Yeah. Because we don't necessarily want to train in open water, a lot of, a lot of sharks. Yeah. Oh, that, that sounds quite <laughs> scary. Well, so tell us about this last dive. What just happened? Oh, well, yo, I definitely rode my ears. I'll tell you that for nothing. Oh. Um, it was a good dive. Free immersion's not really my strong point. Um, I don't like not having fins on, Oof, yeah. um, it's a discomfort for me, it's just years of training and years of spearfishing, I want to kick my way out of a situation, so. <laughs> but oh it was a good learning curve and I'm stoked, got the national record. Um, so you got one national record today and what happened yesterday? I got a national record yesterday. She got another <laughs> national record yesterday. Yeah. So congratulations. And what discipline was that in? That was, didn't get to see? oh yeah, that was bifins. Bifins. Uh, okay. the, the fin of choice. Oh yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay, so where are you normally training? You're not in South Africa all the time, are you? No, no. I actually, I train in the US. Uh, well, I say I train, that's a strong word. Um, I, I'm out in Oregon. Um, with my husband at the Oregon Freedive Company. Okay. Um, and we teach freediving in the cold Pacific Northwest waters. How um, cold are those waters? Ooh, it depends. We have days where it's like 42 degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Um, yeah, so it's eight, nine degrees Celsius. Too cold to breathe, seven more wetsuits. Oh um, and we teach uh, spear fishing and freediving out there. Oh uh, wow, yeah, so I spend some of my time up in Washington, so I am very familiar with those cold waters. The visibility is definitely not as good as what you're seeing out here, so yeah. Everyone, everyone keeps like, oh, it's so dark, and I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? I can actually <laughs> see myself. Okay, so another thing, so since you are going from really, really cold waters to the waters here, how early do you show up to make sure that your mammalian dive reflex is working correctly? Do you, is that an issue for you? Um, I mean, generally not. It's normally, it's an issue of actually hitting depth you know because I really only consistently have 20 meters and you know you can only do so much in 20 meters okay. so you know you're just a lot of negatives and then you get out here and you're like free fall is such a foreign concept to me I'm like what am I doing <laughs> so are you doing a lot of FRC dives yeah. or a lot of FRC dives? dives and you know we're but even so like it's really difficult to train like everything's like three four hours away so we're normally out we're up at hood canal in washington to do our depth training oh my gosh. Uh, about once a month i train in the pool that's really you train in the pool i train in the pool <laughs> okay and so i did use some jargon alert so diver jargon alert what is an frc or an rv dive just for those free divers who are people who are just getting into free diving who are just watching and don't know anything about free diving so yeah if you're looking at an frc so that you're looking at functional residual volume uh, or functional residual capacity dives where you're going below your residual volume uh, so it's basically an exhale dive and what that is we call them negatives um, and what it does is you basically you exhale and you simulate the compression of a deeper dive to and the main point of that is it's not a lot of people tend to think like uh, they'll still hang and spend a lot of time down there that's absolutely not what you want you'll build up lots of like nasty foam in your uh, in your lungs it's a quick dive um, but you're you're basically checking to see that your equalization is still something that's working um, at a simulated deeper depth so Wow. Yeah, so it's really it's an, it's a good tool for for equalization. I always tell people I don't recommend unless you're you know already in the master's level of free diving. Don't don't play around with it. Um, anyone who's new to free diving, please, <laughs> you can really uh, damage yourself, hurt yourself in very shallow water if you are not properly trained in doing that. Okay, so more of the story. Don't try this at home unless you are experienced. So once again, thank you so much for this interview. Congratulations on two national records. <laughs> thank you. Uh, we are going to go to the next diver, so we will check out who is next and watch their dive. Thank yeah. you so much and congratulations. Thank you so much. Have a good one. <laughs> <sighs>
So once again, that was Camila Haber. Uh, she is just now starting her dive. This is a constant weight by fins dive, so you are propelling yourself with two fins down to the bottom plate. 30 Camila is now at 60 meters. So she has hit the bottom plate and is on her way back up. So Camila often trains in cenotes in Mexico. And if you don't know what a cenote is, it is a freshwater cave that has very stable dive conditions because you're not diving in the open ocean. So you have very constant temperatures, minimal current, um, so it makes it a very positive interaction for divers. 30 meters, 145. This is her first competition from the World Cup in Roatan in 2017. She needed to finish her engineering degree on innovation and sustainability in water resources. So this is her first in international competition. So as you can see there, the second safety has met her and they are now getting out of the way so she can surface in front of the judges along the line. <laughs> so smiles all around, everybody looks happy. We're awaiting the judges' determination. Okay, so she found the tag. And that is a white card. Congratulations, Camila. So once again, that was Camila Haber. Haber, constant weight by fins dive to 64 meters. That was a national record. So we are in three, two out of three in a row of national record attempts, two which have been successful. And now we have the third one, Juani Valdivia from Peru. Juani Valdivia is a full-time neurosurgeon, so it is very challenging for him to be able to dive and keep a full-time job as a neurosurgeon. He, if you don't know what Free Dive Cafe is, it is a podcast for free divers, and there is an amazing interview with him where he gets to talk about free diving physiology. So if you want to learn a little bit more about free diving physiology, check out Free Dive Cafe by Donnie Mack, and there is an interview with Wani.
So while Wani is from Peru, he actually lives in the US, in Florida. So he does get to train sometimes there. It has actually been very intriguing getting to talk to him about freediving related physiology. So this is the part of the competition where we are able to get some of the free divers to come in after their dives uh, and just talk about their accomplishments and what they were hoping to achieve and whether or not they achieved them. Um, so the next person that we will be having come up is Camila. However, this is being streamed on YouTube, V as in Victor, B as in boy, free diving. We are keeping an eye out for the comments, so if you have any questions for the free divers or any questions about how the competition is organized, feel free to shoot us a message. If we have the opportunity, we will be able to interview people and hopefully get to your questions. So we are two minutes from the official top for Wani. Hello, hello. hello everybody and here we have Camila. She has just finished her dive and so we're going to interview her a little bit while we're waiting for Wani to continue his. We have a, about one minute to chat with you okay. about your dive. So tell me about that last dive. Uh, I did five things. Five things like, dive. I've been very focused on doing no things. Okay. But then I got these pair of fins, I wanted to try them out mm -hmm. and it felt amazing. I went, I think a bit too fast but I was because I was too eager. Oh yeah? But now I have to do some corrections but I feel better. But did um, it feel pretty clean? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. So these are new fins for you? Yes, yes, yes. So uh, I, I, last year I did only no fins and before I had like a little pause from Free diving. One minute. Uh -huh. so to continue this year. your engineering degree. See right? my engineering degree. Oh, yeah, yeah, congratulations! Yeah. You Thank graduated you. already. Yes. Yes. Congratulations. Yeah. See, we're fit and we're smart. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. okay. So, do you have any more dives that you're planning to do for bifins this time around, or are you not quite sure? Pues, yet? I wanted to do this dive uh, today to feel to see how I feel for the following of the competition. Mm -hmm. I'm of course going to continue with no fins. Okay. And. Uh, See, the, f the dive felt amazing and I equalized and everything went perfect, so probably I'm going to add some meters more. So continue yes. on that. Okay, yes. well congratulations you. on you. your new national record. Yay. And uh, yes. we will see you later on in the competition. Yes. We'll be cheering you sure, on. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Go, Juani. Thank you. Mm -hmm. using a monofin. Wani is also part of the seconds. IDA medical committee. Meters. So if you are looking for medical related advice associated with free diving, make sure that you refer to the IDA medical committee. Uh, they have trained clinicians meters. who are familiar with free diving that can help you with your medical issues. Down. Hopefully we'll have the opportunity to interview him about that. So Wani has just touched down and he is on his way back up. Our first safety is on their way meters. down. Our second safety is also on their way down. They are going to meet him at depth and escort him to the surface. 40 meters. 
Sawani is now at 40 meters. And if you can see here, it is very sunny and beautiful and everybody is getting tanned. Some of us are getting red and some of us are smart and have brought some amazing umbrellas and sun protection. Diver is in sight, so everybody is getting out of the way for him to surface. He did his recovery breaths, gave his okay sign, and is showing the tag very confidently. Now we're waiting for the judges. Here, the freediving community is super supportive. We have so many people here watching and cheering him on. So that was a white card and a new national record for Peru, Juani de Valdivia, with a constant weight dive to 63 meters. So hopefully, once he is done getting congratulated by all of his friends and the safeties, he'll be able to join us here at the commentator podium to talk about his dive and a little bit more about his work with freediving physiology. Omar, Omar. One, one meter up. So the safety team is now pulling up the line for diver Emily Pagin from the USA. Emily is an Aida freediving instructor and she is going to be making a constant weight bifins dive to 62 meters with a projected dive time of 2 minutes and 25 seconds. So for those viewing us live on YouTube at V as in Victor, V as in Boy Freediving, Vertical Blue Freediving on YouTube, we are going to be streaming this live and posting the videos so you can have them to view. Um, feel free to post a comment so if you have any questions you can ask our divers, our safeties or anybody else organizing this team, we will do our best to get back to them when we have the opportunity. So coming up onto the platform soon is Juani from Peru. He's going to tell us a little bit about his dive in the short period of time that we have before Pageant's dive. watching. So here we are with Walney Valdivia from Peru. You have just finished one of your dives. So tell us a little bit about your dive. Um, uh, this is a dive that I have done before. I set myself a goal that was um, below what I've been doing last week. So I wanted to be my first dive to enjoy. 
get all the good sensations, all the good feelings. And just yeah. make sure that everything is moving smoothly. Yeah. So this was a national record for Peru, is that correct? Correct. Oh, yeah. congratulations. Nice correct. job. My, uh, my goal is to spread awareness and spread the beauty of the sport in my home country. Oh, wow. That is fantastic. So while Emily is getting ready for her dive, we have a few, a few short minutes. Two minutes. Uh, tell us a little bit about those goggles that you used. Are those? These are fluid goggles. Okay. Um, I suffer from uh, astigmatism. Actually, I have like zero on my eye, right eye, and about at least 3.0 on, on one. So it's really hard for me to look at the line underwater. Okay. So this really helps me to orient myself. Um, and I tend to veer away from the line for some reason. Maybe my monofin is on an angle. So now actually my diver was off the line. So I had to, um, you know, adjust myself twice. But really the goggles helped me a lot. Um, uh, and it, it does help me to avoid having that rush flow of cold water on my face, which can trigger the dive reflex a little bit strong. Oh, well. Okay, so you were also doing it to help trigger, trigger the dive reflex. Uh, to, I, I would say to avoid it to, to be being triggered so strongly. Oh, so strongly. Yeah. One minute. Yeah. Okay. But it was a nice dive. Very happy. Uh, very happy with the organization, the safety team, and the medical. It's all outstanding. Oh yeah? Yeah, yeah. So you said that you tend to veer away from the line. So do you dive with your eyes open? Can you have a visual notification of that, or do you actually feel it? I used to dive with my hand on the line, and. Uh, I used to close my eyes from basically almost the surface to uh, to the plate, but now I like to put my hands next to my thighs, and I feel like I'm more hydrodynamic. But then I'm forced to look at the line, so I try to look at the line. I squint, I close my eyes, I squint, I close my eyes. Twenty seconds. Every time I close my eyes, it's nicer. Mm -hmm. But if I do that too long, then I'll be at the risk of being off the line. Okay, so. great. Well, thank you for that. So Emily is beginning Ten her seconds. dive. We are going to continue this conversation after she submerges and goes Five, underwater. Thank you. Sure. Four, thank you. Three, two, one. Top time. So here we see Emily getting ready for her dive. She's going Plus. under. Kajin, United States. Constant weight, five fins, 62 meters. <coughs> Dive time is 2.25. That okay? Okay, so while Emily is below the surface, you do some work with cerebral hypoxia that is associated with free diving. Meters. So for those who don't know about free diving, what is cerebral hypoxia? Uh, uh, well, first of all, I, I don't think I can claim. I do uh, research. Uh, I, I have done some descriptive 30 work. 30 meters which sometimes in science is actually some of the most powerful observations are, are, are long-lasting and echo in the attorney of science. So I think the cerebral hypoxia, at least, which is one of the main reasons of mental status changes in free diving, happens uh, from bottom line is decrease of oxygen supply to the brain, um, whether it's from a low blood pressure, um, a regular heart rate, uh, or just plain low saturation of oxygen in blood. Oh, okay. Uh, so when, so for those new freedivers or those who may not have experience with competitive freediving or extreme depths, what can you look at under the surface and above the surface? So what can meters. people see when they're looking Touchdown. on this line to see if people have right. low oxygen levels? Yeah. So the the signs of um, mental status changes. Let's call it hypoxia or or potentially more rarely CO2 induced uh, cha mental status changes underwater are subtle and only I would say the very uh, the, the experienced safety divers that have a let's call it a clinical eye for it they can meters. identify changes in pace changes in technique changes in propulsion efficiency and just change in form and that can tell you that something is happening in, in the mind of the, of the diver when it's ascending that can that can raise the red flag that can get you ready to respond as a safety diver that is excellent to know so that's something for the free divers that are out here watching this live stream keep an eye out for that because it might be a good way for you to practice your skills in recognizing low blood oxygen levels so now we are getting ready for emily to resurface the safeties are down there with her and are escorting her back up to the surface 
She should be surfacing at any moment, so the judges are getting out of the way. Okay, she's doing her recovery breaths. Looks strong. That was a very super clean. So you've had the opportunity to see her dive over the last few weeks, is that correct? Yes, yes, she's very strong. She's very strong back here. Yes. Wait for her. All right, and so she has received a white card. So congratulations to Emily Pageant for a constant wave bifins dive of 62 meters. So back to you. Where can free divers go for medical advice related to free diving if they want to learn more information? Um, <clears throat> I would have to. I would have to definitely uh, name uh, the International uh, Medical Science Committee. Uh, specifically led by Dr. Oleg Melikov, um, a group that I have the, the, the privilege, uh, the honor to be a member of. But I think directing questions to, to Ada Medical is, uh, is, I think, the first stop uh, because they have um, compiled so much information on free diving science and free diving medicine, accidents, incidents, and the statistic of the last uh, 10 years. Um, of competition from 2009 to 2018, there's there's a whole uh, material of statistics about uh, blackouts and, uh, and uh, depending on the discipline, gender, etc. So I think that's the first stop. Uh, you can find the email and the contact on the website. Okay, perfect. Well, once again, thank you so much for joining us here on the commentator booth. Congratulations on your national record, and we are looking forward to seeing you dive. Is there anything else you'd like to say? You know, I just uh, just hope to do the best I can in the next couple of days, and it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, right. Bonnie. Thank you. Good day. Next diver is Ken Kiriyama from Japan. He is doing a constant weight no fins dive to 60 meters, 6-0. This is below what he has done in competitions before. In a previous competition, he has done 67 meters. So this is, since this is his first dive of the competition, he, maybe he is just wanting to make sure that it's safe and everything is working and potentially go further throughout the competition. So maybe we'll have the opportunity to talk to him about his strategy after his dive. Okay, so while Ken is doing his breathe up, we now have Pageant from the USA who has just finished her dive. Uh, we are going to have the opportunity to chat with her a little bit about her dive and anything else that she might be interested in talking about. So once again, if you have any questions for the divers, feel free to post on the live feed and we will try and get to them as quickly as we can and if we have the opportunity. So Emily, we are getting to talk to you about your dive. So what dive did you just do? Um, I go by pageant. Yes. <laughs> For all the viewers. Um, I did 62 by fins. Okay. So, and it was, it was a super it, clean dive? Yeah, it was really nice. My PB is a few meters away from that, so I felt pretty comfortable going into it. Okay. Two minutes. So what was your strategy going into this particular dive? Um, just to relax and have fun, really. Yeah. Like, we're, we've been doing all this work, we've been doing all this training, and we're here to have fun and enjoy everybody who's here and mm -hmm. just didn't celebrate. Okay, so how long have you been here for? Um, I arrived June 9th. June 9th. Yeah, okay. and I live in Dominica, so I came here from Dominica. Wow, okay, so what are the training conditions like there? Oh, uh, to me, Dominica's 
the ultimate. You can't get better than it. Like it's um, one minute thirty. It's just clear all the way down. Um, we do have current, but it's very, very, very rare. How um, much depth can you get? I think below us is maybe 160 meters. Okay, so all, all you need. And so <laughs> is it is it shore access? Are you able to take a boat out? Yep, so it's to swim. It's about a five minute swim, which okay. really is great for bifins because you get kind of a warm up for your legs on the way out there. You can kind of do some meditation or think about your strategy. So wow. yeah, it's perfect. So yeah, like anybody who wants to come train, <laughs> you can contact me or Blue Element or Sheena, John Fain. Oh, yeah. Wow. So I hope to come visit you someday. Oh, that sounds do. absolutely oh, fantastic. Oh, you love it. Yeah, you love it. <laughs> really? Okay. Well, I am so excited for your dive. Congratulations. Thank you. And we are going to wait for the next diver. Perfect. So you are feel free to join Hi, and hang out. Hi, and Darlene. Thank Hi, Mom. You. Hi, Michael. <laughs> yeah. So it's great that everybody is able to view the their divers from the live stream. So thank you so much, Pageant. And we are looking forward to seeing how you dive the rest of the yeah, time. Yeah. Thank you so much. Plus ten. Ken Kuriyama, Japan. Constant weight, no fins. Sixty meters. Dive time is two twenty. On down and duck below the surface of the water. We are looking forward to getting to hear more from him about his dive after he completes it. We just had the opportunity to speak to Pageant, who is representing seconds. the U.S. but is training in Dominica. Maybe you'll get the opportunity to visit her and some of her other colleagues out there. I definitely want to if there is the opportunity. 30 meters. So Ken is now at 30 meters 45 seconds. and still on the way down. 40 meters. Has hit the bottom plate and is on his way back up. 50 meters.
as you see here, the safeties are, are pulling up the line for our next diver. As you see here, we have three sessions throughout the entire day, and the deepest dives start at the beginning of the session, and they move to the shallower depths. As we get further throughout, it is easier for the safeties to drop the line to the deepest depth and pull it up, as opposed to starting it shallow and dropping it. This is Ricardo's first dive of the competition. Each diver has the opportunity to dive up to six times. So he is getting ready to go. So a few interesting facts about Three Ken. Minutes. Ken was a prodigy in martial arts from age 10 to 20, but then left fighting to pursue yoga and meditation. He's been focusing on meditation and pranayama since age 16. He is an AIDA instructor, or AIDA, for those Europeans, pardon my American pronunciation. He has also been an Apnea Academy instructor. He is currently holding the national record for Japan in constant weight no fins at 67 meters. Ken is no stranger to Vertical Blue. This is his fifth visit to Dean's Blue Hole and the third time competing. He was a platform coordinator in 2011. Now that I've given you a little bit of a briefer about Ken, he is going to be joining us here and we are going to be chatting a little bit about yeah. his dive. Hi. Okay, so while we are getting ready for Ricardo to dive, we have a few minutes One to minute chat 30. about your dive and a little bit about your history in free diving. Mm -hmm. hey. The camera is right here so you can say hello to your viewers. So tell us about your dive, how did you feel? Um, Acceptable, I would say, for 60 no fins just to get the the comp started. And I didn't want to announce anything too big. I have some, of course, some uh, goals or thoughts of what I want to do. But um, I think first day, one minute, to take it very good easy, and that was a good decision. It was not the best dive, to be honest, uh, uh, for me, but uh, I made it. And what was challenging for you about it? Um, usually it's something about being in your right mindset like the last five to ten minutes before mm. not getting too um, influenced what is going on around you in this setup because there's a lot of things and um, everyone is nervous before the dive you know the hard rate is not 50 or 60 it's closer to 100 and, and um, to dive with that is of course um, not ideal 
tactics. So actually, the equalization was not that good. Okay. But generally speaking, that's a that's a challenge for me. Mm -hmm. um, so but it was okay. It was good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we are going to remain quiet while our next diver goes down, and then continue okay. the interview after they've submerged. Okay. Okay, so now we have a little bit of time. So right. tell us about your equalization issues. Well, um, it's been going on for most of my uh, free time, okay. so a little bit more than 12 years. And um, you know, the first few years actually, I wasn't really aware of how I was equalizing. Like soft palate, glottis, all that was really an unknown roadmap for me. And people tried to explain what it was and how to do it, and I had no clue, really. But I was equalizing and I did some, let's say for a beginner, acceptable depths. Mm -hmm. And then I broke my left eardrum twice, uh, once in 2012, one in 2013. Wow. And I can't really remember if it made it worse or if it only started after that, but my left eustachian tube is a lot harder to open than the right one. So do you like do any exercises to... I do. and. It's very unpredictable if it helps. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. I can show up and that day is really not, it's not gonna work. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then if you're nervous for a dive, it definitely doesn't make it better, as uh, most people know, yeah. yeah. Well, I bet, no, I sometimes have issues with my left uh, eustachian tube as well, so I so can kind know. of relate. <laughs> Well, once again, thank you so much for yeah, joining us welcome. here on the competition stage. Hopefully we'll get to chat with you later today. Best of luck on your future dives. I'm so thank excited you. because thank I'm you. getting into constant weight no fin, so it's really awesome yeah. getting to watch your dives. Good luck so. with that. It's a beautiful discipline, uh, one of my favorite disciplines, so mm -hmm. enjoy okay. swimming. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, well, have a good day, thank and you. we will check out the next diver. Okay, so Ricardo is now at the surface. We are awaiting the judge's determination. He has flashed the tag for the judges. And they have given him a white card. Congratulations to Ricardo for a free immersion dive to 50 meters. So Ricardo was the second to last diver for session three of day two of the Vertical Blue Freediving Competition. We will have the opportunity to chat with him in just a few short moments. Our final diver for the day is Belle Winner. She is one of our youngest freedivers. She is from the Bahamas and just yesterday got to break a Bahamian national record. She originally started freediving um, because she was a spearfisher and wanted to get an, into the safety and a, learn a little bit more about the safety aspects associated with freediving. Uh, there are some interviews floating around with her, so hopefully we'll get to chat with her soon as well. So while the safety team is doing a depth check on the line, we just wanted to say thank you again to our sponsors, Orca, Sunto, and Double K. Orca is a wetsuit company that originally started with triathlon wetsuits and has moved into the competitive freediving arena. Sunto has the most amazing dive computers and they are one of our sponsors. And then Double K has free diving buoys. So if you get the opportunity, support our sponsors because they support us and make this sport possible. Yeah. 
So while Belle is getting ready, we have Ricardo coming up to the podium here. So once he gets situated, we'll get to chat with him a little bit about his dive. Hey, how you doing, Rich? Okay, so hello everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. And here we have Ricardo. Tell us a little bit about what dive you did and how you did. Oh, well, well I did a, a 50 meter free immersion. Um, okay. Felt good, it's something to start the competition with. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was really happy. As so. it turned out, I was, I had a bit of a head cold over the last three days. Oh no. And then yeah, yesterday my sinuses were clear. Did a little test dive, felt good. And woke yeah. up this morning, felt great. So. Hmm. Okay, so the, for the viewers who aren't very familiar with your particular diving, are you, is free immersion your favorite discipline or do you kind of work throughout different disciplines? Well, you know, I don't, I don't do a lot of competition, so yeah, just swimming with bifins mm -hmm. is, is what I prefer. Usually I do bifins and a mask, okay. so, so this is the first year I'm testing out the fluid goggles. And how do you like them? Uh, now, I'm, now I'm liking them. Yeah. At first it was not, yeah, it was not an enjoyable experience at first, trying to get used to, uh, you know, going down and everything looks different. Hmm. Uh, the nose split, so yeah, it's now now I'm very comfortable with them. So it's going to oh. run a lot better. Cool, cool. So you're from the U.S. Tell us where in the U.S. you're based. Um, well, I'm based in Miami. Okay. Uh, been there for about 30 years, uh, and uh, we teach. So we teach some free diving in Miami from Port Vortex Free Diving out of Grove Scuba in Coconut Grove. Okay. Um, so yeah, we've been there for. 30 years teaching there and Claire of course I don't know if you guys got to talk to Claire who's a professor at the University of Miami um, and I've been fortunate enough that she brought me in so I've been lecturing a scientific freediving course with her too oh. um, so yeah we've been doing that together well, that's fantastic. Yeah, I haven't gotten a chance to speak with her on camera about this, but oh, she does good. have some amazing work about the blue hole specifically. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, yes, yes. She's the cool one. Yeah, you gotta talk to her. <laughs> All right. Great. Well, congratulations. Oh, and watch out. Your dad's computer is popping ah, up. There we go. Yes. So, what so watch is that? Was, so, this is typically, I put this in right next to my ear. Okay. So, I have one alarm that kind of lets me know when I should be doing my mouth fill. Okay. And then another alarm, which is about eight meters away from the plate, so I can start sort of opening my eyes and getting ready to, to reach. And reach that's the why depth. I keep it, keep it right here. Yep. So where do you normally take your mouth fill, and does that change depending on the dive? Um, no. Typically, um, the alarm is set for 16, so when I start taking the, the mouth fill, I'm at about 20, 25, so I try to do a, get a nice mouth fill. And, and carry it on. All right. Well, congratulations right. on your amazing dive. We're yeah. looking forward to Welcome. seeing more dives from you. And thank you for joining us on the commentator. Room. Yes, thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. All right. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> so, for those of you just joining us, this is Belle Winner from the Bahamas. She is doing a free immersion dive where you pull yourself down the line. This is a free immersion dive to 31 meters. Belle is a fairly new free diver and just recently found out that she had the opportunity to set the Bahamian national records. So this is her first free diving competition and she is being warmly supported by other free divers in the community as well as her father and mother who are here with her.
So she has just hit the bottom plate. And just for the divers who didn't get to view us yesterday or get to join us yesterday, she did a free immersion dive yesterday to 28 meters with a national record. She is looking to beat her own national record today, and she is on her way back up. So she has surfaced and is doing her recovery breaths. <laughs> so Belle has just received a second national record, her second white card for her very first freediving competition. She's going to be com joining us here at the commentator booth in just a few short moments and look. Okay, so to do that is really rewarding, but I love spearfishing. <laughs> That's awesome. And so you also are involved in a Bahamian nonprofit that is associated with ocean conservation, is that correct? Yes, I am. So okay. it's called Brief, and their goal is to just um, restore the coral reefs for the animals that live there. And on their website, you can learn a lot more information. It's just brief.com. And they and how also. How do you spell that? B R E E F. <laughs> B R E E F. So yes. B and then reef like coral reef. Yes, exactly. Okay. And um, on their website, they also have a lot of information on the different seasons that you can catch specific animals in the Bahamas. For example, crawfish seasons.